Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to another tip video. This one will be a two part series in regards to overlanding and food while you're camping. Part one, which you're tuned into now, will cover more the general side of tips and anything from a couple of days overlanding to multiple weeks plus. And in part two, I'm going to be more specific on food groups, how to keep them, how to store them, and tips like that. But in part one, it's all about general stuff and let's get straight into it. Always carry backup foods. You never know why you may need it. It could be because your food is spoiled, because you missed plan by a day, or you're stuck in a bush for an extra couple of days, or you're helping out a friend who didn't have enough food themselves. In my case, I carry my backup food in these ammunition cases. Now, you could carry it in any box, cardboard box or whatever, but these are always in the vehicle somewhere. Voila, I've magically opened them. All right, so let's empty the contents. So this one here, I actually used a bit out of last time, last trip I was on. Uh, baked beans and sausages, beetroot, pineapple. This stuff lasts for ages, that's why it's in there. Rice, and you could also carry a ration pack. Now, I understand a lot of people wouldn't just be carrying a ration pack around. For one, they're bloody expensive, but this will give you a whole day's meal. And the only reason why I carry it, because I normally just carry canned food, is because I want to test one of these out. I'll be doing that during a trip or in another video. But that's a good option too. Muesli bars, tuna, canned fruit, you get the idea. So while we're on backup food, let's talk about backup water. Now water, some people are lucky enough they have a water container under the vehicle. Some people carry them in water jerry cans. I like to carry these, these kind of storage containers here. And well, I'll it rained a lot last night when I had this prepared, but this, this was a cask of water, all right? And here is the bag of water. Just comes out like that. A lot of the time, I will take one of these out once the box is split, like in this case, and I'll stick it in the fridge because it just molds everything. It fits in there quite easily. Don't store water all in one container. Have two separate ways of storing it. I'll give you an example why. We just came back from a trip up at Mount Augustus here in Western Australia where there's not a lot of water out there. Now Brian, the Jeep driver, he had a water container similar to this but it had a screw top lid and that lid wasn't screwed on properly and during the corrugation it came off somewhere. So he was driving all day not realising that he was contaminating his water with all kinds of dust and crap like that. But it wasn't the end of the world for him because he had a second container storing water as well. So store water in two different ways and store lots of it. Freeze! Freeze! So if you're lucky enough to have a fridge and a freezer in one unit or a whole fridge and a whole freezer, then you could freeze a lot of your foods, you know, meats, anything. You can freeze anything and it'll last longer. And what you do is the day before, you just take it out of the freezer, you stick it in the fridge, and then it's ready for day two, or the next day. In my case, I don't have that luxury, but on most of our trips, Torben has a fridge and a freezer, and a lot of the time, we will put a bit of our meat into his freezer, because he usually has a lot of room. So if you have a mate who's got a freezer, hit him up for it. All right. This next tip kind of looks like an advertisement for food. I'm not associated with any of these companies, by the way. Easy to cook meals, meals on the go, just easy stuff. Noodles, canned food, like we already discussed with your backup foods. You know, you can use your backup foods as the easy meal as well. New style of steam rice bags, these are awesome. And I'll cover these in part two a bit more as well. They say you need a microwave. You can actually heat these up without a microwave. All you need is a tiny bit of water into a pot and just on really low temperature, just get the temperature into it and this stuff comes out really moist and is, and is good. And you can do it with all the rice packets. This one here, 
For example, it says you can use a pan and it tells you how much water, but I'll explain in part two how much water you really need. And other easy to prepare meals, Torben is a prime example of this. He snap locks pre-cooked pasta and he puts meat and all kinds of stuff in it and then he'll freeze it and it's ready to go. Always remember the simple things. Butter, straight out of the fridge. Most people forget butter for some reason. Cutting board. Instead of bringing three things, knife, fork and spoon, use a spork. Just as good, better. Cooking oil. Spray cans are always easier. People seem to always forget salt and pepper for some reason as well. It's as, as important as the butter. Sugar, what for? Coffee and tea. Do not leave your coffee at home. And the cool thing is, this box is dedicated for all these essential things. I will always have all my essential things in this one box. Not only that, the dead space in this box, I filled up with other foods, like my backup foods more rice and porridge and more cans in there. It is good to have a dedicated box like that. Bring a good coffee mug. This one here, I've actually attached with cable ties. It's lid off in case I lose the lid. Now this is a coffee mug, but who says you can't put milk in it or you know, even mix your favorite beverage at night, a bit of rum and coke or whatever it is you drink. Gain as much space as you can by condensing things and making them more useful to do more than one thing. On the longer trips, so you're out there for a month even, all these foods are going to be great for you. And there are plenty more out there. All you gotta do is look for the expiry dates. And there are a couple of main factors. Preservatives, high sugar content, stuff like that will keep your food for longer. So in this kind of case, preservatives are your friend. And high in sugar is your friend too. This fruitcake has an expiry of 30th of May, 2017. And right now I am almost in August. Canned food, lasts for a couple of years, depending on what it is. This stuff here, this rice, that lasts into 2017. These nut bars, they last into 2017. Just look at the expiry and that is what you want for these longer trips, for the, you know, the latter end of it. Also, with your backup foods, go for stuff with long use by dates for obvious reasons because there may be in that case for a long time you, you can just sort of forget about it you know it's there but after perhaps half a year check all your dates and resupply nap lock bags one of the most underrated things to bring when you go camping now you can use them for other stuff other than food but more specific to food the reason why I bring them is I can divide things up. For example, my tea bags are in this one. Um, you could even put a little bit of coffee in it. All kinds of things. If I cook any leftover stuff, you know, like there's stuff left over, I don't want to throw it out. I don't want to throw it in my bin to stink the bin out. I'll bag it and I'll incorporate it into the next day's lunch or breakfast or dinner. Or even if I don't eat it, it's in my fridge, it's not sticking out the fridge either because it's snap locked, it's cold, and that is a great way to you know, keep things from smelling and preserving foods so you don't throw them out. Also, once you have emptied your blood drenched packets of uh, say your steak, you know the things you get from the supermarket, the little steak packet or sausage, sausage packet, stick that contents into a snap lock bag, all of your blood drenched plastics, Close it, squeeze all the air out, close the last bit, stick it in your fridge, and you won't have a smelly rubbish bag. Bring extra gas canisters with you, because you never know when you might run out. On some cold mornings, it's so cold that the top of your can will freeze over and you can't use it. Therefore, you pull your spare one out and you're off and going. Making a food plan for a trip is the easiest and best way to do it. And what I do is I'll get a piece of paper. At the top, I'll put breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three columns. 
and then I'll put each day. So say if it's 10 days, I'll go from day one to day 10, and I'll fill in each spot there with what I'm gonna have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I don't stick to day one of, I have gotta do this. It's just so I can make sure I've accounted for every single day of food. And I know how much I gotta buy, and it also makes it easier to know how you can split your food up and save money that way too. Another important thing when planning your cooking, if you only have a little hiker stove like this, or say you've only got a camp oven, well, there's certain things you can't cook. So you need to plan your food and cooking around your cooking gear. That is very important. Rightio, well I hope you found some good tips here in part one. Stay tuned for part two. If it's not available now, it'll be very soon because it'll be released just the week after this one. If you would like to support the creation of content like this and the trip videos and the modified videos and all that other stuff I do, you can go to patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe here, or there, wherever the subscribe button is. Take care and the tracks and trails make sure you keep your cooking easy and simple oh one last tip don't forget your marshmallows and uh, get bigger ones than the small ones they're much better